We recently built a $1,000 gaming PC with an RTX 3050, which many of you pointed out was the wrong choice, which is why today we're gonna be fixing our stupid mistakes and putting the RX 6600 in that and seeing just how wrong we were. So we built this PC for $1,000 with the assumption that the MSRP of the RTX 3050 was irrelevant. We went with the street price of $400. We paired it with an i5-12400F, 16 gigabytes of Oloid Blade RAM, a one terabyte SSD, and it was a solid system. But as many of you pointed out in the comments, there was another GPU to be had for that price that we totally should have considered. The reason we went with the 3050 was because Galax sent it to us and we just priced everything out as is. But the 6600 does make a compelling case. Even though it starts at a $70 higher MSRP of 329, the actual retail price, as we mentioned, is closer to $400 out on the open market if you're buying it on eBay. So we're gonna plug this bad boy into the PC right behind me to see just how much of an extra performance bump we could get if you spent your money more appropriately ignoring MSRP. So while we put this RX 6600 in this PC, where you should put yourself into is the best place for you to get your tech needs, which is Micro Center, who is the sponsor of today's video. They're essentially tech heaven having over 25 retail locations across the US, not Pittsburgh, which I'm still begging them to change. They have an amazing selection for you to be able to build your PC or any other tech needs that you may have. They're known for having the best prices and the best selection on all of the components. They've even partnered with Asus to offer an easy to use online PC builder tool, which allows you as a customer to easily customize and build your own computer. You can have the option to build from three different base starting points, which include value, performance, or ultimate. We're probably more on the lower end of that with this PC right here. So each base system will have a motherboard, a case, a power supply, and a graphics card. And then you can add in your choice of CPU between AMD and Intel options, as well as your preference for RAM, storage, and operating system. And then the parts can be added to your car online to arrange for same day in-store pickup. And for an additional build fee, Micro Center will actually even build it for you so you don't have to go through the hassle. But if you wanted to do it yourself, you totally can. And if you're unsure of what parts you need, just like I maybe, uh, you know, did not not have the best parts for this build initially, Micro Center can walk you through that with their experts to make sure you're getting the best system specs for your budget. And right now, Micro Center is offering a great promotion where they're offering $50 off select CPUs. If you go to the link in the video description, you'd be able to see where you can save up to $50 on CPUs when you go to Micro Center and visit one of their 25 retail locations, which again, is not in Pittsburgh, which makes me the big sad. Please Micro Center, I want to go and buy a graphics card locally. It's installed and the 6600 performs better. Who would have thought, but it's, that's not the entire story. So let's go over the actual performance in games here. So we tested a few games at the same setting as the RTX 3050. And what we found was on the whole, the 6600 was faster. In God of War, it averaged 100.5 FPS, which is 7.5% faster than the RTX 3050. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we were at 122.3, which was a large increase of 21.33%. In Fortnite, we managed to hit 195.3 average FPS, which was an increase of 6.4%. But because the CPU stayed the same in a game like Valorant, we averaged 332.1 FPS, which was only a 1.25% increase over the RTX 3050. But in Cyberpunk 2077 was where we saw our largest increase. The 6600 averaged 79.5 FPS, which is 21.56% faster than the 3050. But as I mentioned in the $1,000 build where we put this in this PC, there are other features that come with the 3050 that you need to consider, like ray tracing, DLSS, or the NVENC encoder that NVIDIA includes on their GPUs. So when we turned ray tracing on with Cyberpunk 2077, the 6600 cried. It was awful. It sucked. It averaged 24.1 FPS. Still 1080p, still medium settings, just enabled ray tracing, no good. Whereas with the RTX 3050, the RT cores are actually doing something because it averaged 44.4 FPS. 
So in that scenario, the 6600 was 45% slower than NVIDIA's card. Now, AMD does have features of their own. You can get hardware accelerated encoding on the 6600 and AMD has enabled FSR, but NVIDIA cards can also do FSR now. So it's kind of a moot point. DLSS on an RTX card is just better because it has tensor cores. It uses AI processing. You get better looking image and faster frame rate, even though FSR is labeled as a competitor, it's really not. It's a poor person's competitor. So was the RTX 3050 the wrong choice for the $1,000 PC build? I would argue, no, it's really just different. If you want the fastest gaming experience that you can have that's just raw gaming, the 6600 would be the right choice. But if you want the best complete package experience, I still think the RTX 3050 offers a compelling idea here. And that is probably why the street price on both of these cards is nearly identical. Because even though you're not getting as good of regular gaming, you're getting additional benefits in DLSS, in ray tracing, in NVENC encoding, which helps you not just in streaming, but also if you have any sort of other professional applications. A lot of you guys thought we were wrong, but in reality, we're only wrong when you look at one piece of the pie. If you look at the whole cake, it can be right either way, and it's just a matter of how you want to spend your money. We included the RTX 3050 because that Galax sent it to us. We bought the RX 6600 to prove a point, but in case you want to learn how to build a PC, go watch the original $1,000 PC build with the RTX 3050.